Mama Bus, and you're watching the Jerome Bettis Show. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The wheels on the bus go round, have you heard? Jerome Bettis Show in the heart of Pittsburgh. Okay, you know, I'm going to do this legal, so I'll make the song just fly like an eagle. But we all know who is the star. He's big like a truck. He moves like a sports car. Shifty, nimble, cuts on a thimble. The sound of his name makes the back tremble. JB, he brings the ruckus. When he's rolling down field, they say, come to bust here. The next dealer in the Hall of Fame. All that in a tailback from Notre Dame. With all he's done, he's still Jerome, the kid from Detroit, but Pittsburgh's his home. So here we go without further ado, the Jerome Bettis Show right here on Channel 2. Coming to you from Detroit, Michigan, home of Super Bowl XL, it's the Giant Eagle, Jerome Bettis Show. Let's bring out the star of the show, the bus, number 36, Jerome Bettis. The Giant Eagle Jerome Bettis Show, brought to you by Giant Eagle. Make every day taste better. By your neighborhood Ford store, by the H.J. Heinz Company. Welcome back to Heinz Field. And by Isley's Original Deli Meats and Cheeses. Let's give it up for the star of the show, Jerome Bettis! Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Jerome Bettis in his hometown in Super Bowl number 40. You couldn't have drew, drew it up any better than this. No, you it, you couldn't have even planned it anything better. You couldn't have taken the script to uh, Hollywood. I mean, they wouldn't have believed it if you gave it to them. But you believed it, didn't you? That's why you, one of the reasons why you came back. No question. I mean, uh, you know, last year I had a tough decision to make, and uh, I was thinking about, you know, uh, hanging up the cleats and... Uh, Coming to Detroit, you know, it, it played a factor in there. I'd be lying to you if I said it didn't. And, uh, you know, you want to be here. You want to have a Super Bowl, you know, in your hometown. And you want to be part of it. And uh, I'm just so blessed and fortunate to, to be a part of it. So what's it been like here on game week? I know last week you got a lot of preparation in. Now you came here. You knew it was going to be a big distraction if you let it be. But you've handled everything pretty well. But what has it been like as far as your time? Uh, you know, it hasn't been that rough. I mean, there's been some uh, some engagements that, uh, you know, I've had to be a part of, like uh, the mayor, uh, you know, giving me the key to the city. So things, the things of that nature. You know, you got you, on you, you a little bit about yeah. that fumble, too, I yeah, noticed. Yeah, I know. He, 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 he got <laughs> on a little bit. friends with him, though, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, okay. and, and I can take it. I've got, <laughs> I've got thick skin, so I, I mean... And, and so things like that, you have to find a way to fit them in your schedule. Uh, so that wasn't a bad thing. Uh, it just you, you got to rearrange some of your schedule. So uh, I'm getting everything done uh, and so that I don't have to worry about that, you know, come game time. Let's talk about your team right now. Coming in here, three impressive road wins, defeating the number one, the number two, the number three seeds. Not in that order, but that's a pretty good thing. Not many teams have done. In fact, only one, New England back in 85. You guys have a chance to make history. And win a Super Bowl as a sixth seed, what would that mean to you? It, it mean a lot. It mean that, uh, you know, no one believed uh, when we started the playoff run that uh, we could get it done except, you know, the guys in the locker room, the fans that wear the black and gold, and and everybody outside that said we couldn't do it. And one after the one, the the, uh, the big boys fell. And uh, we got closer and closer to our ultimate goal, which is to win a championship. How many of the previous losses when you had those, I mean, you got so close so many times. How much of that, you know, knowing what that feeling was like? I, I talked to a lot of guys this week who said they remember that feeling, and that feeling kind of drives them. Was that, a, was that a factual statement there with you? Oh, too? no question about it. I think the AFC Championship loss last year did a, did, did a lot for all the guys in terms of uh, reiterating that thought of how it felt because it wasn't that long ago. And, and just to, to be back the second year, uh, in the AFC Championship game, I think it was it was really very, very significant for us. All right, so what will it mean to Jerome Bettis, to the family, to win a Super Bowl in your hometown? I don't know that you could have many better endings than this. This would be one of the best in NFL history. Well, first of all, it'd be incredible just to win a, a, a Super Bowl. Make no mistake about it. But the icing on the cake is definitely that it's at home. My family, my friends, everyone gets the opportunity to see me and be a part of it. You know, you know, they would be able to see me if the game was in Miami, but it's it's not the same. You know, I'm here. It's, it's in the, in our backyard, so everybody feels a little bit closer to uh, the situation. So that, that's why it's so special. All the players had only 15 tickets, ladies and gentlemen, and I know your mother had a great deal to figure out how to, this was going to happen because you probably had three, four hundred requests, but you only had 15 tickets. So how did your mom come to the rescue, and make this thing work, so that people actually would 
get those 15 tickets and who would get those 15 tickets? Well, well, she said on early on that if you had to have uh, three games under your belt, uh, either home or away, in order to be in the running to get a ticket. So that so limited. No bandwagon here. Yeah, right? no, no, no bandwagon people that uh, you know came on at the end there and, and thought we could do it. Uh, it was just people that have been committed uh, to seeing us throughout the season, and so she made it a lot easier on me. She certainly did, and Jerome Bettis made it easier on the city of Pittsburgh by playing the way he's played, and he's led this team to the Super Bowl as well. We have a big show for you coming up. We have Mr. and Mrs. Bettis, the bus. They made the bus. We have them coming up. We also have Frenchie Fuqua, and you talk about Super Bowl champions. That's one of them, and he has some great stories to tell. We'll do all that and more when we come back. John Klein, let's send it back to you. It's a big night tonight in Detroit. Tomorrow, the Super Bowl. When we come back, Jerome's mom and dad and Frenchie Fuqua and Jerome's high school coach. We'll meet them all coming up on the Giant Eagle, Jerome Bettis Show. We'll be right back. You spend a lot of money on gas. How would you like to spend a lot less? Maybe even earn a free tank. It's easy with fuel perks from Giant Eagle. For every $50 you spend at Giant Eagle and GetGo, you get 10 cents off per gallon of gas at GetGo. Just use your Giant Eagle Advantage card and watch your savings add up. The more you spend, the bigger your discounts. Fuel perks, just one more way Giant Eagle helps you save. What's this generation coming to? Same great deli taste that's wowed them for generations past. Isley's original chip chopped ham. Fresher, leaner, hammier. Remember Isley's. Ask for it now at your supermarket deli. Hello, I'm Bill Johnson. My coworkers and I are always happy to showcase Western Pennsylvania. We're proud of our downtown headquarters, the Heinz 57 Center, and the new Heinz Innovation Center, our global R&D facility. We market food products all over the world, from Sydney to Shanghai, Moscow to Mumbai. But wherever we go, our journey starts right here in our hometown. The H.J. Heinz Company, offering good food every day and making a difference in our hometown. What's this generation coming to? Same great deli taste that's wowed them for generations past. Isley's original chip chopped ham. Fresher, leaner, hammier. Remember Isley's. Ask for it now at your supermarket deli. Welcome back. It's the Giant Eagle, Jerome Bettis Show. The Steeler Nation is in Detroit. Super Bowl coming up tomorrow. The band yeah. Smoking Section is yeah, here tonight. Baby. It's a big night. Let's go back to the stage. Take it away, Bob. All right, John. Thank you very much. We got a packed house here at Hockey Town in Detroit, and they're all here to pay their respects for Jerome Bettis. What a wonderful career it's been for Jerome, 13 years, and we'd love to cap it off with a Super Bowl win. And speaking of Super Bowls, our next guest is a man who has two Super Bowl rings, and he was a vital part of the Immaculate Reception. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Detroit native Frenchie Fuqua. What? Well. You know, Super Bowl is here in, in your hometown as well, and uh, you know your team and the Steelers are, are in it. Uh, how has it how has it been for you, uh, being that you've won uh, two Super Bowls? How has how has you know this time been for you this week? It's been drawn the same way it's been for you, <laughs> up and down, clutching your nails, you know, hoping, praying, looking at the beginning of the game, see how it turns out. And like, hey, basically, what I saw was momentum for the number one, the number two, the number three seed. Seattle, believe me. And like, hey, of all my knowledge, junior high, high school, college, pro, you had a momentum, guy. The ring is yours. <laughs> a thing or two about momentum too and you know a thing or two about winning i think that's a great observation i to get your thoughts about jerome the running back you know you can critique him now because that's what you did for a living too yeah I am like i'm gonna really do that too <laughs> you know a lot of people don't know this story and it's a detroit story when jerome was a senior my son was a sophomore a strong safety at henry ford they played each other uh, I was very critical of my son playing football. I made him pump the iron. I made him do everything that was right. 
Jerome ran through my son like <laughs> running through paper towel, okay? I got on my son, John John Jr., little Frenchie. I said, you let that guy run over you. He didn't break stride. <laughs> Three years ago, I apologized to John John. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, John, John, it happened 13, 14, 15 years ago, but I was just laying up in bed watching TV, and I'm sorry that I got on you for letting that running back run through you like a paper towel. <laughs> At least I can say now, it was the H-O-F. And for those of you that are not familiar, Hall of Fame running back. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Do you, do you remember doing that to his son? I don't, I don't remember that. I didn't know. I didn't so know. it was a hit and run. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It was a hit and run. I didn't know that. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Hit and run. Well, Finchie, you were, you were known for uh, your fashion forwardness in terms of uh, the way you approach uh, dressing and uh, how did you make a decision like on a game like the Super Bowl what to wear? What w what went into your decision? It depended upon like basically how important the game was. <laughs> now if you were me yeah. today, you'd be wearing a skin tight lavender jumpsuit. <laughs> I, wa I want to see that. I want to see that. <laughs> Goldfish shoes, a French Buccaneer hat with three plumes in it. <laughs> I remember that, too. And a pink cow belt that went across your whole stomach. <laughs> now, the thing that I had when I played was like, hey, I spent all this money for these outfits, and eventually, hey, the producers paid for them, but like, hey, I had no thought of losing whatsoever. Yeah. If I lost the game, I didn't wear the outfit. You wore the outfit no more. No, I put it in the bag and, like, hey, sell it three years later. <laughs> but with you, Jerome, and one thing that I would like to say, you know, I've been listening to, like, hey, uh, the NFL channel and all the, the different things on TV, and, and, you know, they've been talking about, well, like, if we win this Super Bowl, you're going to give it up. But you got to remember one thing, and all the Pittsburgh fans know this, we do them two at a time. So... <laughs> Two at a time. Do not, do not make any decisions because you're from a different era. You're going to do it three times. So don't even talk to me about giving this game up yet. Buses all over the United States break down. We fix them and they keep on rolling. <laughs> I tell you what, he knows how to rock the room here. I got to ask you, I got to ask you, Frenchie, the, the one thing, we still have never heard a definitive answer from you about the Immaculate Reception. I don't mind telling these folks here because these folks here are from Pittsburgh or they have Pittsburgh ties. <laughs> Promise me that you will never tell what I tell you today about the Immaculate Reception. <laughs> because if you notice, or if you have not noticed, Immaculate things keep on happening. Yeah. So... <laughs> what happened on that play? And I know the majority of you are Pittsburgh fans. I tell you this was truly immaculate. <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer. Ladies and gentlemen, Frenchie Fuqua. I'll tell you what. He knows how to bring a room to life. Frenchie, good to see you. Congratulations. Two Super Bowl rings, and I like that. Do it two at a time. All right. We're coming back. We got plenty more going on. You're going to meet Mr. and Mrs. Bettis when we come back. John Klein, take it away. It's a big night. The night before the Super Bowl in Detroit, 
the Giant Eagle Jerome Bennett Show. And if you're a Steeler fan, you got to pick up that AFC Championship Steeler hat. T-shirts while they're there. Get that Steelers history DVD at the Steelers Sideline Store. It's a double DVD set with the complete history of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Stop by the Steelers Sideline Store. Hines Field, Monroeville Mall, Grove City, now the brand new stores at Pittsburgh Mill. Or go online at Steelers.com for your double DVD of your Pittsburgh Steelers history. We'll be right back. It's the Giant Eagle, Jerome Bettis Show. Stick around. America runs on energy, so why not fuel your future in a career with a leader in energy production? Consol Energy is one of the largest energy companies in the United States with more than 7,000 employees. Consol Energy is looking for professional and technical graduates who are interested in exciting and rewarding careers. Start a new career in energy with excellent compensation and benefits, continuous training, and room for advancement. Visit Consol Energy on the web at consolenergy.com and fuel your future today. Accident victims. For help, call attorney Alan Levy. 412-391-1213. No fee unless recovery is made. For a free consultation, call me now. Right now at McDonald's, you can enjoy two sausage biscuits for only $2. Two for two. And don't forget the hash browns and coffee. Traditions and rituals. That's what Steelers football is all about. And when black, gold, and green rule the day, every part of your Steelers experience is made even better. For fans and beer enthusiasts across this great Steelers nation, get ready, put on your game face, pack up your Rolling Rock and Rock Green Light. Rolling Rock, the official beer and a founding partner of Heinz Field. Pick up a commemorative Myron Coke can and specially marked cases of Rolling Rock at your local distributor today. If you built it, they will come. So we did. Grand opening February 6th. You got a CC Harper Ford. Welcome back to the Giant Eagle Jerome Better Show, everyone. We are here at Hockey Town in Detroit, and we have a great crowd here as we continue with the Giant Eagle Jerome Better Show. John Klein is standing by with our Isleys. Do you remember, John? Cool part about today, Steeler Nation all over Michigan here in Detroit tonight. This is Joe, originally from Wexford, Pennsylvania. Hi, Joe. How you doing? All right, you ready for your question? Sure. All right, this is for a cool Isley. You remember Isleys growing up, right? Yeah. Cool Isleys prize. All right. What Oakland player hit Frenchie Fuqua? That would in the be uh, Jack Tatum. I, I didn't even ask the complete question. Well, you know, it bounced off of him. Franco Harris caught it, ran into the end zone, and the rest is history. And he claims he was actually at the game. Yeah, my dad took me. Give us a go, Steeler! Go, Steeler! Yes. Now back to you, Jerome. <laughs> Thanks, John. The assassin Jack Tatum hit Frenchie Fuqua who was about to catch Terry Bradshaw's pass at the end of the 1972 playoff game. The ball bounced in the air, and in one of the most amazing plays of all time, rookie running back Franco Harris caught the most famous pass in NFL history with five seconds left on the clock to beat the Oakland Raiders in what will forever be known as the Immaculate Reception. Yeah. And as you heard Frenchie say, it was immaculate. He won't tell you if you really hit the ball. You know, the rules were different back then. Yeah, the rules so was if, 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 if he, he made actually contact, made contact, it would be illegal. Right. So that's why he hasn't said much other than it's immaculate. And I think that's the right way to go. No question <laughs> about it. Yeah. You don't want to you don't want to say, oh, yeah, it no. hit me. All right. We got two special guests here tonight. And, and I mean, you know them better than anybody. So why don't you roll out the red carpet and bring them on down? Well, I have the distinct pleasure and honor of bringing on for the second time on the Jerome Bettis show. <laughs> My mother and father, Gladys and Johnny Bettis. The bus factory, ladies and gentlemen, right here. There we go. Well, 
my first question to you is, you know, I've been running around this week uh, like a chicken with my head cut off. How has this week been for you all? I mean, you've gotten a lot of attention. Uh, I know when we when we won against Denver, you all took a, uh, a red eye from Denver to New York to talk about uh, uh, everything. How's it been this week in Super Bowl here? Even worse. <laughs> Even worse. It's but, been exciting. I, I'm loving it. You know, I'm a ham, like, like, oh, like baby ham. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. I, I'm loving it. I'm having a ball. <laughs> I think I had three hours sleep last night, so I was sitting here earlier, and I was doing an interview, and I told the ladies, if, if you see my head, just kind of just kind of nudge me and wake me up. I'm still going. Let me ask you this, Mr. and Mrs. Bettis. This guy is like wholesome all-American guy, in addition to being an all-American and a Hall of Fame football player. But was there ever a time growing up where he did something that got on your nerves or made you mad? Uh, did he swear when you didn't expect him to swear? Ooh, ooh. Or did he? Oh, he did? He, yes, he did. He, he, he said a swear word when he. Uh, he said a swear. What age? About 10. I don't, this isn't a, a, a auto, autobiographer. Yes, it is. We're trying oh. to get scoop out of Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. Bettis. It's not an autobiography. So let's continue, please. Gladys. What I happened? I think he was about 10, and he got caught swearing in the car with his brother and his sister. And we came in the I house. Don't, I don't remember that. And, and I said, Jerome, you're in trouble. And you, I, your punishment for swearing is I'm going to put soap in your mouth. <laughs> and you and you, you you choose the soap. Soap on a rope, liquid soap, <laughs> or we had bar soap, zest. And he chose zest. And I'm telling you, <laughs> he sat there with the soap in his mouth, and it was just running, and his sister and brother was in tears. <laughs> they sit beside him. They, they were literally crying. But he... He, he learned he, his lesson? He, didn't, he learned his lesson. Did you? You had to. <laughs> you didn't I, want any more of that in your I mouth. remember that vividly. Great soda was the only thing that got the taste <laughs> out of my mouth. I learned a valuable lesson that day that uh, you <laughs> you can't swear when your mom and dad is around. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> I got to wait till they're gone. <laughs> John, is, uh, is Gladys more the disciplinarian in the family? Yeah. I'd have to say that any time that I had to get involved, it was serious. <laughs> it was not serious. good, not yeah. good at all. And we'd have to bring out uh, Blue Thunder. Blue Thunder? Blue Thunder. What is Blue Thunder? Oh, that's a... Uh, We're revealing all these secrets here tonight, Jerome. <laughs> this is a, that's, a, that's a pretty white belt that was oh. blue in color. And the, the movie Blue Thunder, was, it was a show. It was a helicopter show. And so that helicopter, you know, so he would he used to twirl that that belt, and uh, it just reminded us of Blue Thunder. It was a bad sight when you saw that uh, that belt come out. Well, we're going to continue our conversation with Gladys and John Bettis when we take a break here right now. But we're having a lot of fun here at Hockey Town as we get set for Super Bowl 40 the night before, on what should be a memorable night. A memorable chapter in Jerome Bettis' career. John, take us away. You know, one of the cool things about being here in Detroit, we're meeting all of these Pittsburghers who've moved here. Donna just moved up from the North Hills to Detroit. Give us a go, Steelers! Woo! Go, Steelers! Stick around. There's still more to come. It's the Giant Eagle, Jerome Bettis Show! Man, are we going to take every lap full speed? Yeah! Are we going to trade paint without fear? Yeah! Are we going to brush our hair 100 times a day and condition after every shampoo and choose the right hair color to match our skin tone? Tim? Terry, I'm an autumn. I'm a spring. Now let's go out there and win one! Supercut, proud sponsor of Fitz Bradshaw Racing. When I decided to go back to college, I looked at lots of different schools to find the perfect fit. Some were so big, I felt like a number. And others were catering to a slightly younger crowd. But Strayer University fit just right. My personal admissions officer told me that the average Strayer student is 34 years old. They're busy working adults with families and full-time jobs, just like me. Call this number to speak to an admissions officer who'll show you how Strayer University can fit your life. How does National City make a difference? We've helped thousands of small businesses realize their dreams. Many couples buy their first home, and many parents send their kids to college. 
Our 4,000 employees live, work, and volunteer hundreds of thousands of hours in the communities we serve. National City, a great place to work. I'm Todd Moles. At National City, we believe being a partner and providing support is what we do best. And that's why National City is proud to make a difference in our hometown. Oh, you look so fluffy. He's as cute as you want to be. Is that your Silverado? 345 horsepower. The new Vortec Max V8 out tows all the other guys. Good boy. Good man. New incentives have just been announced on Silverado from the family of Chevy trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Chevy, the best selling cars and trucks in Pittsburgh for the last seven years. Welcome back. It's the Giant Eagle, Jerome Bannis Show, coming to you from Hockey Town in downtown Detroit. Our band Small Conception has been on the Jerome Bannis Show for years. I want to introduce the guys Rick Gersick. Chuck Serko, Dave Stabinski, Matt Quetter, and Greg Stedman couldn't be here tonight. It's the band Smokin' Section. You want to check out where they're playing on their website, smokin'section.net. And thanks to being on the show all the time. Let's go back upstairs in Hockey Town. Take it away, Bob. All right, John, thanks very much. This is Jerome Bettis' show, but it's turned into This Is Your Life, Jerome Bettis. We are discovering secrets about the bus that you may never have heard of before, like when the time he got his mouth washed off with zest soap. I understand there's another issue uh, with regard to him maybe needing some money and sneaking into your purse. Oh. See, our job is to get the news, Jerome. We have to investigate yeah. these issues. Yeah, you want to tell him. Yeah. His dad can tell. That, yeah. that was a good one. Jerome, <laughs> uh, Jerome was uh, copying some of the friends, some of his friends in the neighborhood who used to, uh, when they needed a little money, go in their mother's purse and, and uh, take a few coins out of there. and. Uh, I tried to explain to him that there were consequences to the things that you do like that. And uh, one of them was being branded uh, the usual suspect. So when any, anything came up missing, if I couldn't find my hat, if I couldn't find my car keys, <laughs> then Jerome was up against the wall, <laughs> get patted down, and, and, and until it, it, it finally came to me and said, Dad, uh, I don't like being the usual suspect. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I realize that it, it, you know, it doesn't pay because, you know, if, if the clock is missing, they put me up against the wall and say, where's the clock? And I'm like, I don't have a, a clock? So I realized at an early age that uh, good it didn't pay to, to have shifty fingers. Yeah, that's very interesting. And I know the one thing about you, Mr. and Mrs. Bettis, you've never missed a game of Jerome, no matter what level here. And I know he bought you a satellite TV. He was telling me once a long time ago about that. So yeah, you yeah, watch him on... Actually, you probably never use that thing. You're always there for one. Yeah, no, no, no. We watch, we, when we come back home, we we tape the game, and as soon as we get in the door, at least that's what we used to be. We, as soon as we get in the door, we put our suitcases down and put the tape in and sit and watch the game as if we had we just gotten home. As no, so we hadn't seen you the were game. there live, yeah. and then you came back and watched it. It's a different show. On Whole TV, it's a different yeah, show. Yeah, it takes me. It, it used to take me a little longer to sit and watch the show. I, it takes me about a week to watch, and by the time the next show, the next game, I'd know what happened in this one. So now I'm, I'm about two days. It doesn't take me quite a week. I'm a little better now. Let me ask you this: Your son is going to be a Hall of Famer, first ballot, one of the best ever at what he's done. Without a doubt. I want to know: Are you more proud of the fact that he's a first ballot Hall of Famer player or a Hall of Fame kind of person? Oh, he's a Hall of Fame kind of person. That's what I'm proud of. Oh, yeah. He's a real, real good guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. John? Definitely. I, Hall of Fame person. I'm uh, very proud of him. Very proud. I mean, I'm proud of him being a very good athlete, but uh, as a person, he's the best. One final question to you, Mrs. Bettis. I know in, in Indianapolis you had to run away and hide in the bathroom <laughs> after the fumble. I wanted to go, too. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had someone in Pittsburgh who had a heart attack, and I'm sure there are yes. plenty of others who are on beta, beta blockers because of it. What, what's it going to be like on Super Bowl Sunday tomorrow when you're sitting there watching that game? I'm going to be nervous. I, I get nervous at Jerome's games. I'm just, I, I just do, because I know any given Sunday, any team can win. So it just makes me nervous. And, and once I sit there and I watch these guys, and, and, I, and these, this team is, is just everything that they say they are. And the, the defense, 
I mean, once when, when Jerome is on the field, I'm usually glued to him, and when he leaves, then I, I can take a, 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 a little breath. But not anymore with this defense. I enjoy watching them. So it's, it's, it's going to be good. And I don't take anything from Seattle, but Jerome is at home. And when you're at home, you do the best in front of your people. There you go. Well said. That's for sure. I'm telling you. From Mama and Papa Bus. Hey, before we go to a break, we have a very special presentation here. This is Haley McCloskey. Haley, come on down. She's from Detroit, and she'd like to make a special presentation to you, to Jerome. You want to say, you want to read something? Um, this is a picture I made, and this is my lucky gymnastics bracelet that you could have for good luck. You're her lucky you. one. Thank you. Yeah, maybe to bring us some.